Us tiebreaker tonight is a three-way tie between Abyss, Avant-Garde, and Tainted Minds. The winner of this tiebreaker gets that final seed heading into the OPL playoffs. The way this works is simple. Each team plays each other once. If a team can pick up a 2-0 victory, they will be the ones that advance into the semifinals. However, if every single team wins a game and loses a game, we will head into another version of this round robin where we play it once more. And if that still doesn't resolve who's heading into the semifinals, we'll have to play a single elimination match between all the teams that will be taking place tomorrow. Welcome back to the OPL. My name is Michael Hingers Hing. And if you're just joining us, we have uh, seen Legacy v. Die Wolves. Legacy came out on top to take that first number one spot in the OPL split two. We are now about to go into a three-way tiebreaker, as Fish was just explaining. I'm joined here on the analyst desk by Jake Spontiberi and uh, Barenta Raz Muhammad. Guys... Oh, you excited? You want to get into this? I'm actually pretty pumped for this one. Uh, uh, the reason I am is because for a very long time in the OPL, mm. like you, you can assess the relative strength of these teams. You know, you kind of have an inkling which way oh, it's yeah. going to go. I have no <laughs> friggin' idea who's going to win this one, Hingers, if I'm going to tell you. I can tell you the strength and weakness of all these teams. I just don't know how they match up. Yep. Exactly. It's such a toss-up that like the prospect... Of another, like... <laughs> yeah, this could go forever, as <laughs> This is, like, legitimately can just go on and on and on, so... <laughs> All right, well, before we get into the games, we wanted to uh, throw to Frosky, who's going to tell us about a competition we're just running now. Thanks, Kingers. Frosky on here, and I'm super pleased to announce the Fan Fiction Contest shortlist has been announced up on the boards. Now, what we did is we ran a contest, we got over 200 plus entries, and we narrowed this down to 10. But I've done all of the work now, and it's up to the community. You guys need to go onto the boards and vote for your top and favorite fan fiction so we can narrow this down to five winners, and I definitely think that it's worth it. These entries are amazing. We have a we have a super creepy one about Twitch uh, taking out people's molars. We've got a Project Fiora story up here. We have a great one about Echo trying to ask out a girl. And an incredible story about Jin and his OCD obsessive need to count and to use four bullets. So it's definitely worth your time. I think everyone should check it out. Back to you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Frosco? <laughs> there we go. I hope she's all right. <laughs> <laughs> she's good. So that, so that was the Echo Fair pick right there. Uh, well, this, this right the thing, I, I saw a few of these entries Frosco was going through uh, through them the last couple of days, and I was frankly disappointed that we did not feature in any of them. There was no fan fiction written about us, you know. Uh, I'm actually We're quite <laughs> pleased about that, guys at home. Oh, yeah, if, uh, <laughs> please don't write stories about me. <laughs> and if you do, keep them to yourself wherever my camera <laughs> just went. You want to get some sweet fantasy fiction with your mates at the, the analyst desk? Uh, I, I love you guys, and I think we should leave it at the analyst desk. <laughs> in saying that, I read some of them as well, and they are quite good. Yeah, I, I'm a pretty avid stuff. reader myself, so th there are some very seriously talented people in us. All right, well, let us get straight into this. It's going to be a three a tiebreaker, so let's look at the lineups right now. We start off with Avant Garde Paradise in the top lane, Chelby playing jungle, triple in the mid lane, Chenny Boy, AD Carry, and Jake in support. Pretty good team. Thoughts? Yeah, good team. Yep. Let's keep things moving down. This is going to be Abyss uh, Esports right now. They will be uh, Pac Man in the top lane, Seb in the jungle, Luch mid lane, Raid, AD Carry, and Tegan in support. We have one final team to go to. Raz, this was the team that yesterday you picked. You said they were going to be the ones going through. You were very excited about it. It is Tainted Minds. Let's get their lineup up right now. It is Prater in the top lane, Zahi in the jungle, Omni in the mid lane, Lost, AD Carry, and Rosie in support. Now, did we hear about about that lineup in Tainted Minds just before? Is that official now? We don't know. Yeah, I, I think that, that that's one hundred percent official that uh, mm. Bella is going to be playing instead, instead of, of Lost. Lost. So uh, that we had some technical difficulties going in. Yeah, we didn't have time to change that geographic, obviously. Yeah. So we, we are going to see a, a bit of a roll swap. Uh, not a roll swap. A, a substitution in yeah. for that. Game. And because it is an emergency sub, Raz, your team, I think. <laughs> Never had this happen to them, but they did get relegated. But uh, so for Tanner Mines, uh, they lose all their beds going yeah. into this game. Is that <laughs> right, buddy? That's what it seems like. <laughs> that's <what> it seems <laughs> like. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's a huge uh, loss because I, I think that you said it best, Raz. I mean, they've just lost all their bands, which is any strategic plan. They've lost their best player on the map as well. So this yeah. is uh, going to be pushing uh, things uphill if you are Tainted Minds. Yeah, right and now. Tainted Minds are going to be the first game. They're going to be playing uh, Avant Guard in this first game. Like, let's, go, let's go through these strengths and weaknesses, Spawn. I mean, who, like, you said you don't know who's going to come out on top. Obviously, Tainted Minds really at a disadvantage strategically and just player-wise right now. But yeah. uh, elsewise, how can they they compete in this in, in this tournament. Well, Tainted Minds to me are really the brain, right? They, they've mm. got Rosie, uh, they've got Zahi, they've got a lot of experience, and then you know they had a really strong bottom lane. Now, of course, Bella's playing. We don't know whether she's going to be playing support or whether she's playing AD carry this game. Mm. Uh, so I think that that's their benefit. I mean, Rosie is such a good shot caller. We saw them come up clutch yesterday versus Sin. Yeah. Uh, 
of our gut, they're the brawn, man. Uh, they, they, they are just, they are such a powerhouse top side of the map. I mean, exactly. they could just slap you around a little bit. They've got such individually talented players. Uh, they don't really have all that much of a game plan that doesn't involve just hitting you really hard, but, you know, they do that incredibly effectively. Exactly. And, like, think, going back to Tainted Minds, like, this must be, like, such a mental... Like, just a, mon a mental burden, right? Yeah. Because going in, yeah, sure, you lose your best player, but the, the major factor, of course, is that now where are they going to focus towards? So now they're going to have to focus towards Praetith. And la yesterday, we saw him really popping off on Fiora. So that could be maybe their saving grace. You know, if this was like a like like one of those sort of 1980s sports movies, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, Tainted Minds, this is yeah. this is technical difficulties. Who knows what's going to happen? But if it was like one of those 90, like Mighty Ducks kind of thing, this is like, no, they planned this from the start, man. <laughs> this is their trick play. Yeah, they deliberately sprained their ankle, and now yeah, they've exactly. got a crane kick. Like, it's what the heck is that? No job, one's you seen guys. it before. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, I do like the fact that it changes uh, the process priority on the map mm. because uh let, let's get honest avant-garde's bottom lane isn't all that much anyway uh you, bella and rosie if that is what they list mm. down there they'll do completely fine against chenny and jake in my opinion mm -hmm. and if zahi actually gets top lane praetith is m individually very strong there is mm. a chance that he can take it uh to paradise especially if he gets some jungle assistance now that's been my biggest criticism is yeah. they give him nothing and then put him on a carry if they put him on a carry and give him the resources there's a chance he goes berserk exactly and so really yeah we're going to be looking at zahi in that sense which goes straight back to like now abyss we haven't really touched abyss right mm. and abyss is a team that theoretically they're overall like a solid team right it just comes down to a playing consistently and whether or not this team can play an easy composition or easy style. Sometimes they, they pick themselves into a position where they're going straight uphill with like a Janna pick. Yeah. Like it just, eh, not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> not not right, a fan. Well, let me ask for, for, for viewers who have not seen Bella before, what, what can we expect from her? I mean, obviously, you, you, she, she's been around the OPL and the OCS for a while. What, 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 what do you know about her? Uh, yeah, Bella support player uh, from when she was back in the OPL. I mean, uh, she's quite fiery, I've heard mm -hmm. in comms. Uh, so she can get the team uh, hyped up and is a big game player. I, I, she had a pretty wide champion pool as well. Like, yeah. uh, I, I think that Bella was like a really versatile, like good player. She wasn't... You, you d if, if you're going to run a drafting system where you're like, you can take any support in the league, unfortunately, sure. you wouldn't take Bella first, but she's a very sure. serviceable player. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I agree with that. Yeah. And I think uh, on top of that, Rosie is a player who does like to play pretty much every position. Uh, yeah, no, let out. me... Yeah. I have uh, coached Rosie. Yeah. And, like, I'm comfortable <laughs> saying this. I exactly. coached him a very long time ago. Uh, he was playing things like Zig support while I was coaching him. He, he was a mid laner. Uh, we used to run one-on-one -on -one drills against the team and he can very handily like take it to top laners. He's got a fantastic cannon. Yep. He has a great Ash as an, uh, and Caitlyn as AD carry. Like, this guy literally plays every role in League of Legends well. So sure, if I'm a jungle, Raz, yeah. he's all over it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, let's go straight into predictions then. This first match, who's going to come out on top out of uh, Ten of Mines or Avant-Garde? What do you, what do you, what do you, I'll go to you first, Raz. Okay, I would say Avant-Garde just, to, just because... So you've gone... You, you said earlier... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ten of Mines with your boys going in and suddenly because of... Too a, many surprises, they lose all the man. They're catching me with too many surprises <laughs> today. <laughs> <laughs> if they lose their band, suddenly it's all over. All right, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty... I, I've, I've, I've I'm going to flip flop on my thing yesterday. I said Avantgarde are the best team in this uh, three way, and I, I do believe that I think they're going to win it 2 0. First time around, get me home in bed early. <laughs> All right, well, that is just about enough from us here at the analyst desk. Let's go hand it over to our cast to take you through game one of this three way tiebreaker. It's, Ro it's Rogi and Rusty. Thanks so much, Hingers. And the small tiebreaker is out of the way. We got the big guns now, the massive three-way. And first up is going to be Tainted Minds taking on Avant. Yeah, the tiebreaker that could have us here all night <laughs> or could send us home early if Spawn predicted correctly. Of yep. course, Avant are showing a lot of positive signs moving into this tiebreaker. They managed to take a game off the Chiefs. Didn't find the victory that would have stopped this mm. whole thing from happening, but showed that they do have what it takes against the best teams in the OPL. Now they have to do it against the middle of the pack, and it starts with Tainted Minds. Well, it's going to be difficult for Tainted Minds because a lot of their strategies revolve around getting lost into a yep. very advantageous position without him on the team. Kind of a few question marks here, but I do like what Spawn said about Praetith being one of the carries. They put him on a carry, then they just don't give him any resources. So this might be time for Tainted Minds to think up a new battle plan. Yeah, so the OCS Tainted Minds roster got their way with the two-pronged attack, essentially, yep. right? They would have Lost and everyone had put resources into him, but then they'd also have Praetith on the opposite side of the map, just running yep. havoc in a 1v1 scenario. Just dumpster anyone maybe, Yeah, exactly. Like Maybe bring two people up there and still take them on successfully. Like This guy is a freak. When you get him going, 
But now because there's no Lost, and Strawbella is also a support player, maybe they just put everything into their top lane. Look, it's definitely a potential here in Praetith, one of the players who has the potential to be that massive carry that we know him as in the OCS here. But losing out three bands as well, it's going to be kind of bad for Advant as well, because that means that a lot of strong champions are going to get through. But remember that Tainted Minds only get to pick one of them. Avant, Avant will get that ability to pick two. Yeah, so the question more so is about what will Avant actually ban, given yeah. their first one being the Bard. They've put one of the three into a targeted position. Now they could look towards the Malzahar and the Vladimir to round out their banning. It's a big question mark, and if they want to do that, they could actually ban neither of them mm. and maybe force something to be picked by Tainted Minds and pick up two of the better ones themselves. It really could go either way. It makes a lot of sense getting rid of that Mouse and Vlad to the champions you really don't want to play up against, but they fear the Cassiopeia more. And after what we saw Choose doing it last game, I'm not surprised. Yeah. But Omni's performances on Cass aren't True. indicative of a ban. However, if you look at how Tainted Minds have been winning these games against Spawn, called them the Brain, and I agree, if we're comparing them to AV, who are all about that brawn, they will look at Baron, they will look at Drake, they will look at every single avenue of attack that is a neutral objective or something that they can control or trade for to find advantages and then start to carry away the map through their shot calling. Cassiopeia is a mid lane choice, excels at taking out those neutrals, and so they take it off the board. Kind of fitting that you guys are calling Tainted Minds the Brain since their logo is basically half a brain. Well, it's half a skull. It's still got a full brain. Oh, yeah. Well, half of it is a brain, should I say. Not just half of a brain. Okay. Yeah, there we go. But the last band will be the Vladimir here, so Malzahar left up and open. And be wise for Tainted Minds to kind of take that off the table, especially if they want to put a lot of their resources back into that top lane. Kind of just give Omni the ability to just press R on whoever he sees fit, and the rest of the team can follow it up. Absolutely right. Of course, we need to see what they look towards. Once again, Strawbella playing instead of Lost, something that we haven't noted. She did boot camp with the team. Ah. And so she was actually available with them practicing, being there for the scrims. You would imagine the communication is going to still be top notch with her in the roster. Just need to see how uh, this performance goes in the AD carry role because Tainted Minds still waiting for a potential Malzahar. If it's not that, then maybe a Braum. Let's see what they end up going here. Just hovering that Yasuo just for fun here, but with five seconds left on the clock, they're going to have to make their lock-in quick smart here. It's going to be the Karma. So I haven't seen a great deal of Karma very recently. Either gets banned or people just go for the Braum these days. And that initial pick of a Karma almost speaks to me that they may want Strobella playing the support position. Sure. I know Rosie could play it. It's not his flavor as much as other champions may well be. Now AV to pick. Got two very strong champions left over for them here. Wouldn't be surprised to see these the ones that they lock in the Aurelia and the Malzahar. Up in that top, it's hard to look past Aurelia when she's available. There it is locked in for Paradise. And he's quite a carry in his own right. And there's uh, the Malzahar for triple. Yeah, so a strong first rotation now from AV. The thing with the Fiora, sorry, the Aurelia is literally the Fiora. That's what I was, <laughs> way to ruin a point. No, it's more that like you lock in the early Aurelia, both of these players are carry players. Praetith was a Fiora main in the whole mm -hmm. way through to coming up into the OPL. Still shows that he's capable of that champion and starts putting on some big carry performances yesterday. Once again, would not be shocked to see that locked in as a response to it. No, definitely a, a possibility here coming out of Tainted Minds, but Rek'Sai still available. So is the Gragas, so is the Aliso. All the top tier junglers left on the table. Let's see what Tainted Minds go with. Lucian available as well. I would almost go for the Elise to deny it from AV. So the thing Smart. is, they're running it's either Gragas or Elise, and that's the problem. Like, they've got the Melzahar, they've set themselves up with a four-man pick composition potentially already. Mm -hmm. Painted Minds have to respond in some way. Gragas might be better than Elise. Fits what they'd want to do, but both are good. It looks like we will be seeing the Gangplank, actually, in response to that Aurelia up in the top, and Zahi gets himself the Elise, so going away from that Rek'Sai. Yeah, and rightly so, once again. Mentioned two other junglers that would be more ideal. Mm. One now taken from AV. Would not be shocked to see a Gragas now for Chelby. And the Gangplank with it. Something that uh, Praetith performed exceptionally well on, honestly. They were able to get his team across the line with this performance on that champion. Went more of a crit build after yeah. the duelist start. Was able to take people out quite handily in that top lane. We'll see if he gets the attention from his own team that he deserves such a prominent player up in that top lane. 
They've got the Elise, so very good at making those early picks, especially locking someone down for that barrel combo to hit 100% are really going to have a difficult time avoiding that oncoming damage. But they have the Malzahar, so it's going to be difficult. He can, can he orange his way out of that one? I think so. Okay, well, they've got that going for them already, so that's one target that uh, is safe from the Nether Grasp. But let's see what Avant lock in here. It's going to be the Rek'Sai and the Jin. So no Gragas actually interesting. Yeah, but they actually put the Rek'Sai with the Jin. So once again, one of the stronger facets of their team composition is that Jin can hit the W after a Prey Seeker connects or the Pea Shooter as it has been cool stuff lacking towards. So <laughs> they give themselves once again a more rounded, longer ranged team composition with much more utility in catching people out. Their siege is quite dangerous. Their team fighting is quite potent. And they stiffened their strength really well. So a team divides answer here. Can we up to their mid laner? and their carry kind of give us an insight onto will it be Rosie or was it, will it be Strabella taking up the reins of the attack damage carry. Mm. A lot of options available, the Siva, the Ash, the Lucian, Ezreal. It's all here. Let's see what they go with. Yeah, you'd expect some kind of utility AD carry if mm -hmm. we're going to be naming them. And with that, the middle lane, that'd be curious. Okay. Let's see, you've got five seconds left on the clock showing their hand maybe here with that Varus pick. but. Picking the Varus into the Malzahar, so kind of the same train of thought as versing an Azir. He can't hit you if you can never get in range. Gives an easy last rotation, though, for AV in the support position oh, to wow. round out their team comp. Yep. You look at AV's team comp position as like an isolated group of five. You just shake your head and say, how? Like, how is this allowed to happen? You flip that over, though, to Tainted Minds. They have some tools there. My concern is that's a lot of physical damage. Oh, definitely. They're really going to be struggling to get through any magic resistance that uh, the side of Avant will be picking up. I imagine either Jake or Ch uh, Chelby will be picking up some early AoE MR for the team. Up, uh, I'm thinking MR for. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> my total wrong train of thought <laughs> here. But no, that's it just allows Braum and uh, Chelby to get a lot of, just stack a lot of armor essentially, which also coincides with health on the majority of those items. So Yeah. I mean, spot on, that's exactly what they look towards. And on a Rek'Sai with a Cinder Hulk build, very uh, handy and efficient to mm. actually have any kind of armor health stacking items as they round out their composition. No surprises once again. AV running themselves the stock standard avant-garde-esque composition with a Malzahar in that middle lane. He's going to have a lot of kill threat on every single member of Tainted Minds. You round that out with long range lockdown that a Jin can provide. If one ultimate connects from the Jin, he's going to slow you down by, I think it's about 70%. Yeah. And then Melzahar can just waltz up to you, press his R key, and then you're 100% dead. No, Vant really have laid their plans straight out on the table. It's whether or not Tainted Minds can actually play around it, because like you said, it's going to be very simple for Melzahar to get in there, lock down any target of his choosing with such a long range engage that Chenny Boy offers. And then of course you've got Paradise, it's going to be that backline threat, Jake keeping everyone safe, and Shelby knocking anyone up that comes a little bit too close here. So this Avant uh, roster is really scary. It definitely is, but this is definitely a contrast of I want to go at you and take you out, mm -hmm. opposed to I want to run away, kite back and poke you out definitely. before looking for these major objectives. So very contrasting styles and polarizing plays need to be seen from each team. Yep, Simon Tender Mines really don't want a bar of it right now, but hashtag TM win if you think the addition of Straw Bella can bring them over the line, or hashtag AV win if you want to see these guys go up 1-0 in the tiebreaker to end all tiebreakers. It's going to come down to the wire. That much is for certain. Game number one of our three-way tiebreaker. We could be here all night, so <laughs> buckle up because game number one is only the tip of the iceberg. Look, it's going to be a good one for sure. Both these guys drafted themselves very strong team compositions. Avant all about single pick. Tainted Mind's about making sure they're out of range. Yeah, of course, AV want to have more than one member hanging around. Their team fighting will be quite dangerous. Their skirmishing also as a four-man roster is quite strong. They have a lot of tools as Tainted Minds do need to show up to play. Alrighty guys, get yourself a glass of water, maybe something to eat and get comfortable because we're in for the long haul. We're one game in to our first tiebreaker that for all we know could go all night. Tainted Minds versus Avant. First game. Once again, big win conditions for both of these teams need to be present. We already spoke towards what they are capable of doing as a five-man unit, but how they actually put this into practice is really the key thing. And Gangplank and Varus in any team composition 
do excel at what tainted minds like to do, and that is look for these neutral objective fights. A fight over the Drake where a Gangplank Ultimate's able to separate teams or mm -hmm. put damage onto them if they choose to join is really clutch, actually quite important. Not only that, they want to poke everybody out if they're not outright fighting for those major objectives. Utilize that Varus poke, who, oddly enough, has a Thunderlords. Yeah. Utilize that Ash Arrow after the Varus has hit the poke and just commit. Look, a lot of accuracy is going to be required from this Tainted Minds squad to pull off their game plan here, whereas Avant, kind of the opposite here, just getting uh, Triple to chuck down the <laughs> ult and pile on after that one. So, kind of polar opposites here tonight, but that could be said about these teams. Brain versus Brawn doesn't get much more polar opposite than that. It's actually stacks on, isn't it? Yeah. Against the composition that has entirely skill shots, they're playing <laughs> one that has, like, none. It's a Mel's ultimate and an Aurelia. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess Chenny Boy has maybe has to hit one of his shots from his ult. One out of four, not bad. Yeah, yeah, he can hit. Like if you hit <laughs> one, you then get the next three, right? That's it, right? You can also just auto attack on that gym. The Malzahar really does not have a skill shot. What a chance! Why I say that every time? Yeah. I say, what a chance! In interesting mid mage season changes choice. But looks like we will be having Rosie in that AD carry position. Strobella rocking the support. That's right. So they did swap. We speculated that may be a thing when the Karma was locked in. Not a surprise, honestly. Rosie is the jack of all trades for Tainted Minds. I think he's historically and competitive at locally play. Actually done about five rolls now. It might be four. There you Definitely go. four. Shelby. Going to be making the first move of the match. Zahi's nowhere to be found. Omni's going to have to burn a summoning. He uses the Ghost. Gets flashed on, though. Triple has found his way in, but Omni with the Ghost and the Flash gets himself to safety. Gets himself out alive. We'll have to use all of his potion stacks if he chooses to stay in this lane. And not only that, definitely has no summoner spells available. So a good first move and first blood drawn by Chelby. Strikes into the middle lane of Tainted Mine. See what Zahi chooses to answer with. The junglers are going to find each other. That was not in the bush, Chelby. It's alright, he spotted the target. <laughs> He's got vision of his own here. Constantly getting updated by the Tremor Sense. But remember that Triple does have that cleanse. Should God forbid his passive be on cooldown. And they decide to go in on it. Yeah, Chelby has Raptor Sense, but he didn't go towards that blue buff to clear out the ward either. Mm. Just hangs out. Maybe goes for the wolves to smite them to ensure that there's no elite nearby before he does it. That'd be quite risky. However, he has the winning mid lane at the moment, so you'd expect jungle control to be entirely available from AV in particular. So, yep, naturally moves towards the objective. I think a good move here would actually be to give this to triple. I don't think he will. It is Chelby. And they normally... Be, oh, yeah, he could do it. But again, he's not exactly the most generous jungler. He loves the resources. Got a lot of experience on that one. A good chunk of gold as well. And he's probably thinking, hey, I burnt my flash to gank the mid lane. The least I can do is have this blue buff. But up in the top, Praetith doing a good job just bullying out Paradise here. But still has to respect the uh, innate sustain that Aurelia does have. Yeah. Using those barrels quite well as well. And Paradise will work out in this lane. Okay, Raideth yeah. running out of mana is a big deal. Of course, kegs don't use mana. Those who do not know. So you can actually sustain decently well in this matchup mm -hmm. given the armor penetration. The real source of damage is actually from those barrels. Gragas might need to take a lesson on more efficient keg usage here, but right now Paradise just chunks down Raideth who tried to go for the cheeky recall. little barrel. Like he actually has to recall. Zahi's making his way up, though. Paradise barely taking any damage at this stage, but look how low Praetith is. Paradise will kill him with a single Q if yeah. he stays. Of course, the Flash is there for both members. He's trying to bait too hard because Chelby's also been able to rotate. They will do this. Even in a 2v2, they'll still win. Look, they might be in trouble. Chelby is here, gets a Prey Seeker, flashes in. Praetith flashes out. Does Paradise have a way to get up? No, there's a Cocoon locking him down. Now, Zahi in the firing line, does have his flash available, able to work, walk on out. So Summoner Spells traded from the top lane, and Praetith playing with fire and almost gets burned. That was an absolute misplay from the uh, Aurelia, to be honest with you. Didn't wait for his mana pool. Now these two are going aggro. Jake does get snared up by the Karma Chenny Boy on that fourth shot. Huge damage onto Strawbella, getting slowed up by the captive audience. Means Rosie can't get in attack range, but his dancing grenade should allow Chenny Boy to have no trouble last hitting under tower. Yeah, but damage on a Straw Bella is still a winning trade for Tainted Minds. He's got three potions available to his name. Now these two, once again, poorly timed Keg actually only resets part of the health, doesn't get the damage off, so 
Freyleth just gets chunked out by Paradise, both teleports being used here. Oh, now Zahi, he gets locked down, he gets knocked up, and he gets killed. First blood to Shelby. AV still being the aggressors in these games at the moment. Zahi has been the product of a lot of misplays and capitalization from enemy teams throughout the recent games we've seen from Tainted Minds. Their bottom lane's doing well, their mid lane's farming well. Praetith is struggling against Paradise, but look, that's expected when you're in a pressure cooker that is Paradise's lane. Really, it's that jungle roll that determines the win or defeat both of these teams. But so far, Chelby has playing, been playing very well, getting the double summoners down in the mid lane, then rotating up to top to ensure that Paradise is an easy time against Praetith. But look at the damage that Paradise is outputting right now. That's a Sheen to a uh, Phage. Yeah, that GP is basically out of lane already. He does have a lot of sustain with the uh, oranges that he can eat. But now that the Aurelia has got backline minions, those casters actually set up to queue towards, Praetith is out. He's got no potion stacks either. Where like he walks up, he dies. Paradise sitting at three. Ben comes through, but Paradise with no fear. Looks like he wants to take this one. He can go to the minions. Like, Paradise is out. There's actually no situation with where he dies there. Kind of got that Yasuo mentality. Use the minion highway to your advantage. Yeah. That was definitely a freeway. <laughs> Again, you ever use your W on Aurelia? Of course, you max it first. It gives sustain. You then get that bonus damage to kill the minions. Even though he has a phage, he's still able to do it. So a lot of those casters. Look at how bad this is. Dog Prey is forced to use his ulti and what we saw just before Jake was making his way up to that mid lane. So not going to have that global pressure uh, presence available. And Paradise is able to corral the minion wave to his advantage and really make a life living hell for Praetis. The Pied Piper of the minions. <laughs> <laughs> Plays the tune. Now wins the lane and Praetis has got Zahi here again. So Center Blade being used through healing him up so much. Dashes over the barrels, gets himself to safety keeps happening. So Zahi is here out of necessity not to gank and get a kill onto Paradise. No. If he doesn't come up, he doesn't force the wave under the turret, then Paradise will maintain a freeze and look at the CS advantage between the two at present. Oh, this is wow. nothing short of a disaster for the start of game number one for Tainted Minds, but exactly what AV wants. Yeah, and on cue, Shelby just goes and takes away all the jungle resources. Zahi's still only level five. Shelby now has was level six, hitting that level seven, seven so quite far ahead of his uh, opposition here in terms of our uh, jungle level. Omni might be in trouble. Remember that Rek'Sai does have very unique gank pass over the Raptor camp. Which so we'll just be clearing that one away for now. Yeah, should be taking that gank out. Of course, Engine Mine's bottom lane have disappeared, so Chelby showing his due respects, especially now they hit that level six point. Focusing around that middle lane once again. Makes perfect sense when he's got a Malzahar there to gank oh, for. definitely. And especially with that Drake nearby, they can just play around this map incredibly well. And the best part about this game, and the reason that Avant looks so far ahead, even though the goal is just a thousand, is simply because Paradise has not been addressed by Chelby. He's able to counter jungle, he's able to focus mid lane, he's able to look for Zahi. It's all working because an isolated Paradise is still a winning Paradise, and it feels like that recipe for success is finally being realized. Well, that was kind of the story we're telling for Praetith, but right now he's just getting outlaned essentially by Paradise who despite Zahi coming up top out of necessity like you said is really <coughs> not being able to find his footing but speaking of footing Zahi gets knocked up here he flash for the ulti and there is the Jin just to secure the assist triple picks up that one up in the top Paradise gets the 1v1 takes him out under tower too easy Avant make it look the scary thing is that's exactly right it's too easy AV are commanding the battlefield right now in every single position Omni has no ability to help these teams out. There's no rotation available. And now they look towards bottom as well. well done, yeah. Jake just flashes in, gets the knockup. Rosie goes sky high, does get the kill in return. He's still alive, he's still doing damage. Gets himself the double kill, actually. Allows for Straw Bella to get himself out of there. And we say Avant made it look too easy, but that was rough. Rosie's doing his absolute best lost impression. Omni finally arrives, but it's not going to amount to a kill, you would not think. As again, well played by Rosie and Bella. Mm -hmm. Really good job from this 2v2 of Tainted Minds. It's always been a strength point from them, and it's a pleasure to note that it is going to maintain that exact same strength. Yep, Rosie going to be feeling good about that one. Two kills for the one. The Praetis, he is in a world of her right now. A whole level behind. And Paradise just controlling the wave so well. 20 or so CS detriment over to Praetis as well, so... 
They're both rushing the same item here. and That's the thing though, right? Like both being Trinity Force spikers means that if you're winning lane, you stay ahead. Yeah. The Trinity Force has the biggest spike and extra 50% damage to champions with that sheen. Oh my like, lord. Look at this damage. There's no recovering until past the Trinity Force spike. Yeah, there's really nothing he can do in this lane. Gonna be having to say, set up those keg highways just to last hit. He was forced to use his ultimate again as he's off cooldown for a while. Shelby taking so much advantage of two winning lanes to get in there and pressure Zahi. Paradise made his way down Kratos as well. But you know that triple can be the first to answer to really find anything. Yeah, not only that, Bella's nearby, so Jake's not actually in the area. He has to start rotating, and they would have been quite slow to the punch. So AV have to show their respects for the potential damage to come out of the opposition team. They're able to just walk away casually, and that's the best part. We speak to towards win conditions of these teams as we're now at 11 minutes, and mm -hmm. AV have a winning top lane. They have a successful mid lane. Their bottom lane's not far behind. It is 2-1 on the Ash, but the CS still favors AV. Definitely. They can actually use every single lane as a window of opportunity or an avenue of attack to get successful further ganks off or acceleration <coughs> of the game. This is now the perfect example of where they could look if they really want to. I'll be back on the top. He's able to clear out that ward and Raiders has to run to the hills, allowing Paradise to start dealing damage to this tower, taking out the barrels, 10 gold for his troubles. And Shelby's up here now, but looks like they just want to deny as much CS as possible. Maybe go for that Rift Herald. Yeah, they could have just denied the CS. Yeah. Before yeah. going to Harold. But you know, <laughs> to each their own. That's it. So we do have full control of that one. Hawkshot comes through, spotted on out. But I don't think that uh, Changing Minds are in a position to fight for this one. As long as the Rift Herald, of course, doesn't reset the aggro. Yeah. Shelby has enough health to take that up quite handily. They'll also spot them out well in advance, so this now settles down quite nicely for Tainted Minds in the way of getting gold back if mm -hmm. they can get this down. They also get extra free farm on Freighted. But now it's on. Oh, turn call in onto Rosie. All Jake needs to do is hit the nice two-man ult, but uses the point blank range stun. Triple does the ult for style, gets himself the kill onto Rosie. Yeah, ults him while he's in mid-air as well, so stay suspended in that position. Now 2-0-1 is the Malzaha, and that's the strength of the Jin ultimate. It can be used as an engage tool to continue to ensure that people are going to be locked down as a... He has to run through it. Takes a little bit of damage, but... Not too much to shy away from. Zaki's in the mid lane, Shelby just scaring him on out, and they really can't find a way to pressure this Malzahar, so oh. the Varus pick just used to kind of stabilize here, but <laughs> it's only stabilizing his own lane. Malzahar is so strong that, like, Varus's champion choice in this game is literally just picked to exist. Yeah. Like, don't, you don't lose. Varus very rarely loses. Even if you're, like, 0 3, you'd still be a Varus. I don't understand its pick either. No death by his touch as well, so won't be doing those huge. Thunderbolt. Yeah. Kind of going for that thirsty build, so that kind of makes me think that they did want to punish triple. Shelby takes away the blue buff. Cheeky attempt to try and secure it from Omni. Not going to happen though. For the last hit under his tower once again. Like, I'd actually pick Melzaha into Varus. Yeah. That's the weird thing. Corbella doing her best to defend these wards. Just going to force Jake to turn tail and retreat. Ocean Dragon, the first dragon up, but we haven't seen either team even look towards it here, so not valuing that health and mana regen, but I feel like that's something the team of Lions could use. It's the first Drake of his name. You would expect some kind of importance put behind that again, but a single Ocean Drake at this stage in the game is a uh, luxury item. It's not really that influential to any kind of game outcome. AV can put more emphasis on the top lane. Maybe freeze an extra 10 CS for Paradise in advantage is actually still a very good advantage over that game. Yeah, Vine can seamlessly do whatever they want right now. They have complete control of the map, despite the gold not being too far in favor of Ivana. It's just the champion picks that they have right now is enabling them to do so much with so little. Well, look at Jelby. Like, you'd think this is his jungle. Yeah. That's how often he's been there. Completely outclassing Zahi right now. Tainted Mind's forced to respect that as well. Retreating from their first tower here, allowing Chenny and Jake to get some nice damage down on that one. But here comes the gank. Oh, what actually being this used This is pretty here. big if they commit. 
They don't. Oh, teleport does get cancelled by Praetith up in the top lane, so... Does mean that Scroll Bella and Rosie now have to run away. Yeah, neither top lane are actually having teleport available. Chelby was still in the area. Zahi had to run down as fast as his little spider legs could skid up. The real deciding factor in this is always going to be triple as Paradise. Like You're a man. To take this one goes all in. There's a gangplank ulti, but he just handily takes him out. Has to flash to avoid death. That's disgusting. Afraid of can't avoid death at this stage. That's the Trinity Force spike for what it's worth. I know that Praetith now has one of his own. Yeah, the Rift Herald as well. So they both helped. had full health. Yeah. Rogi. No, I he just walked at him and he died. I know, it was like one of those things where, oh, he's just, he's, he's, he's going to bait out some cooldowns here. Maybe the Flash, no, he just straight kills him. Uh. Just straight up 1v1s him under tower. Level 12, Irelia with some boots. And of course, the Trinity Force. That seems to be what it takes to 1v1 uh, equally a strong gameplay. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Praetor's itemization now changes to like a next item, Infinity Edge. <laughs> it's like, well, this lane's done. Why am I dueling? Oh, he does get stunned up by the ulti. He's able to just jump to Chenny Boy and Zahi can't find anything. He pulled down wasted for nothing. Yeah, good use of the trap actually by Chenny to slow all three members down. They won't get themselves any follow-up kills from the arrow connecting. And it was a brawn with the door up, so relative damage there is actually quite low. Really insignificant. Zahi's now a second support. Chelby's just off into the wings as well, and he's making his way down through the river. It's the boy Paradise. The tower in the bot still stands, so maybe he can go for something cheap. No, nothing. They know you're there. There's a big five man potential group available for AV because that mid lane turret being down means a lot of control of mid lane is missing. Yes, Omni has a lot of wave clear, but. Here we go. Yeah, I don't think Zahi is long for this world. Just gets flash knocked up and destroyed. We've seen this before. Paradise bodying people under tower. Where did his health bar go? <laughs> Didn't have a Where health did bar. Where did it go? <laughs> so I swear there was one there earlier. <laughs> but he's actually just being destroyed again. We saw this in the last series. I am not sold on Zahi playing Elise no. over Gragas. There are very few reasons that I would pick that instead. But now that uh, Avan has full control of the map, handily take themselves a nice little ocean drain here can be very easy. I don't think anyone who minds can even think of answers. Just chuck them in a fire flight board to be sure that it's just a bait them. I'm fine. I think this game very, very well. The only time they seemed to falter was in that failed tower dive attempt that netted Rosie two kills. They are still playing this reasonably cautiously a bit. Because every game matters. We go 1-1, one, one, we go again. So they want to start this one off 2-0. And yes, they have found themselves with a sizable gold lead to set themselves up in this game number one. Mm. They are still taking every precaution necessary to ensure they get the objectives, to ensure they find themselves with an actual win condition. That accelerated Aurelia is their condition. Prater's oh dead. no, Praetor does get slowed up. Two attacks, three attacks, four should do it. Paradise cleans that one up. But Praetor, he did get the Grump with his ultimate. Oh, so did he? It's, it's not all going to crash. That's a win. <laughs> That's a big win. Now he's like, oh my god. You've got to take your wins where you can get them right now. Paradise looking for something with the Transcendent Blades. There is Chennyway popping down the ulti. He's a four shot going to go through. The minion Field wave. Goal. Yeah, scores a goal. That's a plus one for AV, but there's already <laughs> one dead. Praetor has his teleport, but does not have his ultimate to actually help in a lot of these skirmishes. So if he goes to a side lane, he's a non-factor because Praetor needs setup time. Unless it's actually that level 13 gangplank, in which case your kegs are in. They're not up yet, but we do have time for gangplank to respawn to ensure that it isn't taken that easily from Avant. Avant, though, grouping up as five. Didn't able to get any damage down onto the tower, now turning their attention yep. onto the Baron to ensure they get proper visual control. Yeah, so walking as like a five man unit, even against four of Tainted Mines, is pretty risky. You actually want to have Paradise on a side lane. Maybe want to have somebody else to potentially 1-3-1, one, one. but the best case scenario once again for AV is that they don't just directly walk in the middle of a lane towards Tainted Mines where they're just waiting for you with the kegs or the Karma wave clear or the Ash wave clear and Varus is poked with all of the above. They should play strategies a little bit more refined than that and win through the macro and just general strength of their top lane. He's getting himself the blue bar here, but he gives that one over. Looks like Zahi's got a few amp tones in his inventory now, so still going for that ability power route despite being insufferably squishy. Omni mm. does a great job of just 
holding the wave here, but that's really all we've seen from him this game. That's all he can do yeah. as well, because it's a Meltahar. He makes you fight the minions. It's much like the Sivir of the mid lane. True. You're just stuck dealing with these waves of minions coming at you. Varus has a lot of wave cleat. Usually has a lot of look like wave control. He excels at level one fights because you're an AD champion, can walk past the wave. But Melzahar has Voidlings and has the Malefic Visions that he can place down. And then once he gets level six, kill threat on a champion that can't run cleanse because again, it's Melzahar. Cleanse doesn't get rid of his ultimate. Then you're just destined to sit back and watch yourself lose in slow motion. That's it. Paradise and Praetith do have their teleports available now, so this should be when Avant start to pressure out this Baron, maybe look for the bait. Omni forced to retreat, give up vision control here, Zahi trying to do what he can, but once Jaden pops up the shield, it's kind of null for stand him, up, he might be in trouble, forced to flash, here comes the curtain call, doing a lot of damage onto Strawbella, chain of corruption misses by Omni as well. A lot of damage now placed down, however, onto all of them. Chenny still has a lot of lockdown. Oh, Paradise no. is actually proxying the wave. Poor Praetis. To the point where GP is using his ultimate to deal with a side lane. That sums this game up quite nicely. Paradise is a very risky position. Okay. Does get snared up here. Jake blocked away a ton of the damage. What? Oh, he comes through through Bella. One minute she was there, next minute she was gone. But Avant able to get themselves out safely for now. Jake has to flash, Chenny has to heal. Bella go! <laughs> to the, to, back to the fountain. Paradise, I think, pressed Q and just evaporated yep. the health bar, of course, coincided with Jakey. That was actually surprisingly well done from AV, considering that Paradise was not in the right position. And his triple's just hanging around, trying to be that ultimate threat under some unsuspecting victims. Again, we're seeing the positives of AV, but coinciding with the potential pitfalls of their draft, playing into the strengths of TM. Oh, let's see what they can do with this Baron control now. No vision to be seen out of Tainted Minds. They're going to have to blind check Strabella. She's back up, ready to go. Taking out those wards. Going to be getting rid of the captive audience also. Don't you get any wards in here? But he might be in trouble. Forced to use the cocoon defensively onto Shelby. Mm -hmm. There's going to be more wards that Avant find themselves to take out. In situations, though, where Shelby hits that Prey Seeker and Jin's nearby, that's where you get locked down and die. Yeah. So this is that rinse and repeat. If they group up in the middle lane, the idea is we poke you out before Omni pokes us out. Oh, no, Strabella once again getting caught out here. Destroyed. Taken down. Triple actually uses the flash ulti combo there. Omni being Omni. snared up. He's going to go down. Uses his own ulti defensively here, but he can't outflash. The curtain call comes through. Big 800 damage on to Omni. Now Zahi. No where to go, just gonna get burnt down here. Deadly fire has come through. Is he gonna stay alive? Yes, gets over the wall just in time. Chelby actually quite low, but now Praetith in the firing lines. Look how much damage Chenny can do with just a few autos. And all Praetith is doing is dying, unfortunately. The yeah. gangplank has no influence. Now three levels behind his lane opponent, and the 4v4 of AV is more than strong enough to win these games. And all of these fights to get themselves towards the Nexus is Zero scores a goal. That's now 1-1 in soccer. Yep. Unfortunately, it's 2.11 in Summoner's Rift. <laughs> and look, the gold lead just spiraling further and further out of control for poor Tainted Minds. Nearly 10,000 in the lead are Avant. Tainted, yet to even get a single objective. Zero towers, zero dragons. Luckily for them, they have two kills, or they'd be at risk of being perfect game in game one of a tiebreaker. That uh, screen's disaster. Very far up, he's able to tunnel under. To ensure his safety. That was the ballsiest thing ever. Yeah. Like that was an outright 1v4. Maybe even 5 if he got caught out with a single CC. Well, speaking of CC, Triple just throws down the ult. Zahi, no way to escape. This one does get silenced. Burning down with the Malefic Visions isn't enough. The Prey Seeker from Shelby secures that one. And that just means that Strabella is the next person. With the slow coming in from the Malefic Visions, she gets slowed down. Paradise cleans that one up, gets himself a double kill. Poor Omni, even with the ult, he can't do anything. Rosie, now the next one, burning away, flashes over the wall. Jake knocks him up with the ult, he prayed it on the wrong side of the map. Here comes the curtain call, stands true, walks the plank, sinks to the bottom of the ocean. And that's a complete ace now. AV find themselves so far ahead of Tainted Minds. At the end of that fight, I felt like saying class dismissed. <laughs> They're just teaching them how to win a game of League of Legends. Look, Avant are uh, taking Tainted to school right now, or so it seems. Chelby going to be taking away that Inferno Drake. Two lanes being pushed simultaneously for Avant right now. Mid lane tower goes down to the inhibitor stands. Bot lane tower should fall shortly after. 
Now down to half health, Gravella avoids a deadly flourish with four members strong from Avant. Machelby can get back here whenever he chooses, has that Void Rush available. Yeah, of course, just wants to get as many things as they possibly can at the exact same time. Look how much damage that E does. Oh, hello. <laughs> what? I think he was trying to put a ward down or something, and you know, that's not my ward key. Oh, he's <laughs> proto belted a little bit forward. Oh, there. he might have just bought it. That's what happens sometimes. Ah. You know how it readjusts its item slot mm -hmm. when you purchase it? Yeah. Yeah, it goes into whatever component it seems fit at the time. The but now. The pecking order. Yeah. Avant are in full control of the map, but Tanamines still do have their inhibitors standing, so Avant can maybe just go in and take that one away. I'm sure Paradise. Feeling very ballsy right now, as we've seen time after time. He's down, <laughs> diving turrets, proxying waves. Predators just took the blue buff from Omni. Like, I'm just watching like, <laughs> life really unfold in front of my eyes <coughs> quite poorly. This is not a life that I would like to live if that's how Tainted Minds are going. So, things gone from bad to worse. The gold lead now 11,000 in favor of Avant. And take a miracle for Tainted Minds to find an avenue back into this game. Yeah, nothing short of that miracle. Paradise, I'm not convinced, would lose, would win actually, I think, in a 1v3. They'd need five people there to actually handle him. Once he gets that Ghost Blade in particular. 502. 100 CS ahead of his opponent. He's Bella just so damn strong. He is close to being up. caught. Deadly Fire is not going to land. There's a curtain call use. Doesn't get the first tag or the second. Just cancels that one away for the reduced cooldown. Triple in the mid lane. Paradise in the bot lane. And three members of Avance strong up in that top. Look at this. All the lanes at once. And there's there's nothing that can be done about it. Nah, this, go right? get him, Paradise. <laughs> Turn around. Imagine, he wants if he, it. imagine if he could chew off the barrels. He still wants it. Go off a spiderling. Get a reset on your cube. Stun the Elise and watch him die. We wouldn't even have to watch. He'd be over in a blink. We've seen it before, just how fast Zaki goes down, especially with such a magic damage heavy build. But he's still pestering, and he's looking towards that inhibitor. So if ever they leave and it's a 1v1, it's just his for the taking. They're going to send a couple people down there, which means the rest of AV can work on the opposite side of the map. And he's just going to take it with really no answer the Tainted Minds can give right now. And but now he's going mid. It's the exact same thing that applies. Just makes his way back up into the mid lane. This time it's a lot closer to the top, so Avant should be able to back him up if things go awry. Yep. This will go down sooner or later, but the level 13 from Gangplank is finally present, which means perhaps sure. they can look towards defense. Well, the level 17 from Praetith, uh, Paradise actually is way too much right now. The Curtain Call helped pick up two members of Tainted Minds and Avant in a real position to end this game. Yeah, they're still going. Yep. Omni forced to flash away after the Nether Grasp, but does time out. Deadly Flyers can't land on anyone, but doesn't matter. Paradise flashes through. Exhaust actually keeps Drabella safe for now. Jake trying to tag someone up. Rosie on that Ash has the ultimate available, but really no one to back up the damage. Paradise just playing front runner for the team. Yeah, still physical damage dealing team. Randuin's completed. AV now just looking towards the finish of this game, number one. Yeah, Omni chucks down the corruption chain to try and delay the inevitable, but it is not going to happen. Avant, a, a very convincing game, number one. Take it to Tainted Minds. Yeah, 30 minute game, and they are so far ahead of their opponents. Yeah, Nexus just getting lower and lower. Looks like they do want to get some kills here, but Tainted Minds actually getting a few of their own, maybe. Triple's He's spoken too soon, no triple. He's got about seven or eight Voidlings all just whacking away on that Nexus. Takes it down. Tainted Minds, though, looking a bit shaky here, Rusty. Yeah, they definitely are. I mean, AV still looked quite convincing in that game. Very commanding victory from this team. On the flip side, Tainted Minds, they have the substitute AD carry. Yeah. Didn't really help them with their win conditions. Yeah, super strong team composition coming out of Avant. We're going to send it back to the desk to kind of tell us how Malzahar and Aurelia can be on the same team. Thank you, Rosie and Rusty. Rogie and Rusty. My bad. I apologize. Uh, uh. <laughs> so, uh, what happened in that game? Do, is this a collapse or is this just a domination from one side to another? Let's go the with you. Let's start map. with you. Yeah, I'll just go. The yeah. entire map, pretty much. That mm. was like near 20k gold lead. Pretty much any time you look to contest, like Tainted Mind looked to contest their own jungle, mm. they just get pushed right out, killed. It was really, really dominant. This shows why, uh, like, no matter who plays the game, right, that you actually have to pay, pay attention to the matchups that you're sending your laners into. Mm. 
because what we actually had here was, you know, a dominant top side of the map for uh, avant-garde. And it didn't matter what Bella and Rosie did. I mean, at one point, they were able to trade two for one underneath the turret. They'll up it. They'll, they'll up or even in CS a lot of the landing phase. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, even if Lust is in that game, they don't win because no one mm. paid any attention to Paradise. I mean, the guy's running around the top lane, flame horizoning people in five CS up on any... Uh, five levels up on anyone on the map. At that point, the game's over. Like, the ship has sailed... Into the far, far distance, figures. It's, AV just ran away with it. So the postmortem is that the substitution you think didn't really matter. No, not at all. all. I actually yeah. think that, like you know, at some point, and uh, you know, this is going to be really hard on the tainted organ. I understand that, they, like, this is not a situation they want to be in. Sure. But your jungler and top laner need to go back to the drawing board and figure out what they're trying to accomplish. Mm. Because there was a point in time where uh, they got frozen on top lane, and Zahi walked away to hand over a blue buff. Mm. I mean, at that point, Praetus is like, I can't recall. If I go up to the lane and unfreeze it myself, I'm going to die because yep. he can already solo kill me. And you've just left my lane to go give a blue buff over. Yeah. I mean, Zahi has to stay in that lane and auto, a creep, uh, auto attack creeps until it hits the target. That's just hanging your top lane around to dry he actually in my had opinion. To, he actually had to burn ulti just to push the wave too. And, and then it got refrozen again. Exactly. Yeah. It accomplished, accomplished nothing. But if you're AV now, do you kind of take confidence from this match? Or do you kind of say, look, we were playing against a team in like dire straits. We don't know, really know what was going on. Do they... I mean, do they take, walk away from this feeling confident going into the rest of this round robin? One thing that I was really looking forward to Avant was mm. that, yeah, sure, they have the brawn, right? They can like if you, they can always outduel you. They can get the standard lanes. It works out for them. But mm. when they had the advantage, they cleaned it up quickly. So quickly. Yeah. That was that was incredible. So I love that for them. I want to see that for them next. The time. other thing that I was impressed in seeing is, you know, they went with Rexai and Melzahar, and there was a little bit of that mid lane jungle synergy back. Sure. I criticized it uh, on Monday night. It was good to see them return to some old form. All right. Well, that is just about enough from us here on the analyst desk. We'll be back right after this.